How's it going guys? Today I'm going to show you in this video on how to put on this real nice LUA script screen onto your uh, onto your Tyrannus or Tyrannus Plus to get this uh, this nice telemetry screen. Uh, so far I have plugged it in, everything works, except the only thing I haven't done is went outside and plugged it in and, and tested to see how many satellites uh, I get on that. Uh, because it's ass cold outside and I'm not going to do it. So uh, we'll have to worry about that one later. But the DB8, the DB works, the signal strength, uh, this right here, this 45 degree right here, that's the tilt on the uh, on the gimbal. Uh, the battery does come work. Uh, the fail safe works, the altitude mode, um, GPS, manual mode, all clicks in up there when you're in that, and that with that switch. So, so far it's working real good. This is for a DJI 550 with a NASA 2V system and a, uh, and a gimbal. So uh, this is going to take a little time for me to, to show you how to do this, if we can keep that from shutting off. So we're going to take it nice and slow after this part right here, because I'm going to have to stop and start the video uh, to get everything in and try to explain exactly how to get this onto your radio with no big hassles and, uh, and functioning real good, because you are going to have to actually go into the script and make some changes. Now, it's not that difficult. It's pretty simple, so we'll just go through it step by step. So I'll be back in a minute. Okay, so here we go. First thing you need is the download, and the download is the very bottom one here. Uh, you need to type that into your googly bar and uh, and and do that. Uh, fortunately, I'm on my iPad, on my uh, on an app doing this video, so I can't just give you the I can't give you the link. I wish I could, so that's why I'm keeping it here, so you can you can copy it and and just write it down or something, and then type it in. Uh, but that very bottom one is the link that you need. Uh, we're going to take a quick trip to uh, also RC settings as soon as I find my mouse. Uh, okay, uh, as you'll see in this website, there's a lot of uh, UL, LUAs in here. Uh, scripts that you can use, you can download and put in your Tyrannus for all different kinds of screens, uh, for all different kinds of things. Uh, but the one we're going to be using for today is for the DJI 550 and the NASA V flight controller. Also, uh, there's a quite a bit of them in here. Come in here and go to that page and uh, and uh, look around in there. So here's the one I'm going to click on right here, right here. And as you can see, when I do that, just by typing in that name, it's going to tell me it's going to give me a blank page because it's telling me that it can't translate it right. So if you just come over here to uh, go to original page and click on that, as soon as you do that, your download is going to come up down here at the bottom. So all you want to do is, of course, save your download, and then we'll get out of here and go to uh, the download box. So I'll be back with you in just a second. Okay, here we go again. Now, this script is set up so it uses uh, certain switches. So if you want to change the switches, you can. Now, this script is set up so uh, your F, I think it's your F, SF switch is your fail safe switch. Your SB switch is your altitude, uh, I'm sorry, GPS altitude and manual switch. And... Um, your uh, SG switch is your home lock and course lock. Okay, so those are the, if you have those switches set up uh, like that on your radio, you won't have to change anything. But I had to change just the one switch. My failsafe was set up on that switch. My home lock was set up on this switch. But my altitude, GPS, and manual mode was set up on this switch. So I had to change it. I had to go into the script actually and change it. So I'm going to show you how to do that too. And uh, to from the SB switch to the SC switch, so that's the only thing I had to do to get it to, so it would work real good on my radio. Now you can do it either way. You can change it in the script, or you can change the switches around. It doesn't make any difference which way is easier for you. So uh, now since I got that part done, uh, I'll be back in just a second with some more. Okay, I'm back again. Here we go. Now uh, here's the download right here. And all I had to do was uh, come in here, right-click on it, and, and extract all the files. Now, I actually, I have two of these. I have one here that I've already changed for my setup, and I have one here that I haven't changed yet. Uh, this is what yours is going to look like when, we, when you download it. So let's click on this one first. Okay, so you're going to click on that one. You're going to open up your SD card, and you're going to open up scripts. Now, these are the three, uh, these are the three uh, screens that you're going to be putting in. Now, as you can see, we have a BMP file and a model name. Now, you have to change this. You have to come down here, rename it to whatever name that you're running, 
on uh, on your on that model. Let's say if it's Joe's DJI or or Jim's 550 or whatever name that you you've got in for that model, or if it's just model number one, you just put in the model number one. I hope you understand that. But you have to just change it to the exact same name that uh, that your DJI 550 is. Uh, I don't know what that might be. So uh, we're pretty much done for here. You have to change this name. Now this is going to be a little bit on the tough side here. This next one uh, is if we're going to have to come in here and change the scripts. Now if you have different if you have different uh, switches set up for your fail safe, your home lock, and your uh, GPS and altitude and manual mode, you're going to have to change some switches. So uh, we're going to hit scripts one more time, and then I'm going to hit. You can see that I already changed this because my I, my name on my model on this one I run my DJI 550 is on Mike, so that's what I changed it to. Okay, so these two bottom pages here you can't really change it, but you can change this top page, and this is where you're going to have to make your changes. Now, as you can see, this was tested on an F550 uh, with that 3D uh, gimbal with that X8R uh, receiver and NASA V2 with GPS. Okay, so we all know that. <coughs> oh, I'm sorry. Okay, so now if you want to use this, uh, if you want to use this screen when you're on, say when you're in your companion and you're simulating something, you can do that. Okay, but to do that, you have to come in here and you have to change this zero to one. This zero right here. You have to change it to one. And when you're done using your companion, you have to come back and change this from a one to a zero. It says, don't forget to put the zero back in if not in simulation. Because if you, uh, if you forget to change that back to one, or I'm, I'm sorry, if you forget to change it back to zero, uh, you'll have false readings on all your stuff. So here's the first thing we're going to go in here and change. This is a real, these are real simple changes, so we're not going to make any major things. First thing, we're going to go down here to the battery display. And he had a 3S battery set up on his, and I changed uh, to the 4. So we're going to change this right here was a 3. We changed it to 4. This right here was a 3S. I changed it to 4S because all I use is a 4S battery. Uh, that's real, real simple. Now, to come down here and, and change what switches I had, to, I had to change to, the only switch that I had to change was from the SB switch to the SC switch. Now, as you can see, I put an SC right here where there used to be an SB. Same right here. I put an SC where there used to be an SB. So that was easy to move those switches around. Uh, you can do that on any one of these. You can do this on your SF switch if you want. If you're fail safe on your SF switch, uh, you can do it on your SG switch, which is right here, uh, for your home lock. Put it on whatever, whatever switch you have your home lock and course lock set to. Now remember, when you're done doing this, and you're all done, I mean, those simple little changes, you have to come up to the file and you have to save it. Or if you don't, it will it will go back, it will revert back to, to its regular form, and then it won't work right. But once it's in the radio, because actually you want to do all this before we put this on the SD card. So you definitely want to do that. I'm sorry I didn't tell you that before. You want to make these changes before we put these on the SD card. So now all the changes are made. I'm going to back out of here. Okay, so this is my this is my file right here. I have two of these. And there's some other places where you can get some more scripts, but uh, I couldn't I have about two or three of them more of them right here, but I couldn't get those to work. This is the only one I could get to work. Uh, so so I'm going to do it like this. And I'm going to do it like that. And now I'm going to have these two files uh, are going to be on my SD card. So I'm just going to shorten this page up a little bit. All right, so give me a minute so I can go in and and get my transmitter turned on, and uh, then we'll put these in the file. Okay, as you can see, I have my Tyrannus now plugged in, and this is my removable F disk. And as you can see right here, I do have a script file, which is right here, because this is where we're going to put these two files. Now, if you have an older Tyrannus and don't have a script file in here on your FD on your SD card, all you got to do is make a new file and name it scripts, because you're going to have to do that. Uh, but the Tyrannus Plus already has the script file in on its SD card, so all you have to do is uh, is just click on it, open up that file, and what you can see, I've already dropped these two in here. So there's my BMP and my mic. As you can see, here's my BMP file here and my mic file. All you got to do is just grab both of these and drag them over and drop them in. But I don't need to do that, but you'll have to do that. 
And once you do that, you should have, you should be set. It should be working just fine. Um, and then you'll have to go in and make some adjustments, you know, uh, because it does have a gimbal setting on that screen where you can actually, where it shows you the tilt, what, if it's 45 degrees, whatever degrees. Uh, you might have to make a little bit of changes on that. I did. I made a curve for that, but that was no big deal. <clears throat> Excuse me, but uh, this is pretty much all there is to it. Uh, it's not that hard. Then um, unplug your radio, exit out, and then and then go to your telemetry screen and see if they're there. Uh, and that should be just about it. Uh, like I said, there's a this is a whole brand new uh, another area that's opened up for the Tyrannus. Uh, that's there people are going crazy on. And while I'm at it, I'm just gonna have to say hats. I'm gonna thank the guy who made the script for us here that we're gonna that we're using today. I don't know him. I think he's Dutch or German. I'm really not for sure. Uh, but thanks to him for uh, sitting down and making that script uh, for the DJI 550. And uh, there's going to be a lot more of those LUA scripts coming out here in the near future that's going to do a lot. That's really going to open up the, the field in the Tyrannus again to make it such a top-notch radio. So uh, there you go, guys. Okay, last but not least, we got to make sure it all works. As you can see, I got uh, the radio turned on, got the hex all plugged in. Uh, as you can see, I'm getting, uh, I'm on my GPS mode. My battery is at 15.9. I'm getting 102, 103 dBS. Uh, let me turn, get some light back on that again. Uh, as you can see, if I flip through my switch here, it changes all my stuff. I'm not going to hit the fail safe button in here, but uh, home lock on. That's all working. Uh, as you can see, it's working just fine. Uh, and also, if I turn my knob, I had to go in and make a little pitch curve for my for my gimbal. So right now, if I just pull my gimbal down, it moves real nice and easy. And if I put the, the slider right back to the middle, it will not go up at all. It will only go down. As you can see, I set that I set up a curve for that, which was real easy to do. So the gimbal's working real well. Uh, this is for a three-axis gimbal, but this is a two-axis gimbal, and it works just fine on that too. Uh, but as you can see, everything seems to be working just fine. Uh, uh, it's a nice little screen. I'm sure there'll be some updates for it here soon on some more stuff they'll be putting on it. And uh, I'd rather have a, uh, I'd like to have a timer down here would be a lot nicer. Uh, but uh, right now it's just working great. So that's how it works, guys. So there you go.